Okay. So, we are looking at this uh, long problem where there is a wind, right? There is this wind which is coming on one side, or it is having a lot of moisture, it is having some particular temperature and pressure. Then the air parcel is rising, it rises up to the LCL, then it rises beyond, then uh, it becomes super saturated. So, it sheds some of its moisture as rain on the windward side of the mountain, it further climbs and then comes on to the other side of the mountain. Why is it moving? Because of the wind. It is moving to the other side of the mountain, then when it is coming down, it is following what is called a dry eddy bed. When it is following a dry eddy bed, we see that the temperature is increased, all right. So, we will now plot it on the skew T lawn P chart and show it. And then if the internet works, if the internet works after this, okay, if the internet works, we will also look at uh, what the internet is saying about this phenomenon. That is some uh, wind is coming on the windward side, shedding its moisture and going to the right side. They have some phenomenon like this in Germany also some particular type of uh, wind, all right. So, this was problem number 38. So, we will, uh, the first 5 minutes, <coughs> I will just quickly run, uh, jot down only the highlights, the important variables. So, that it helps me when I sit down and plot it on this QT lawn P chart. There will be a revision for you and also for those people who missed the class and it will be very useful for the people who are taking the course or want to watch the course on NPTEL, all right. So, for the benefit of the people who did not come to the last class, the problem runs like this. An air parcel at 1000 H bar has a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius and a mixing ratio of 14 grams per kg, correct? Is this correct? An air parcel at 1000 H bar has a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius and a mixing ratio of 14 grams per kilogram. What is its wet bulb temperature? First question. Then the air parcel is lifted to the 700 H bar level by passing over a mountain and then 80 percent of the water vapor that is condensed out by the ascent is removed by precipitation. Determine the temperature, potential temperature, mixing ratio, wet bulb potential temperature of air parcel after it has descended to the 1000 H bar level, same 1000 H bar level, but now it is on the other side of the mountain, okay. So, we are looking at the story of the air parcel as it moves from left to right or right to left, whatever, and a mountain is in between. So, the first thing was saturation mixing ratio twenty eight, right? How much did you say? 30 is it? 28? Okay. T D is 18? What is the theta? How do you get theta? Huh? Ah, 30 I thought. 30? Mm. Dry idea but okay. Eight forty. Okay. Then
Now follow the saturated AD bat. Till it reaches. Intersection gives very good red bulb value. Now we will stop and then do it on the chart, okay, so that it is helpful. Okay, what is the initial condition? 30 degrees. Hmm. Okay. See today. Today is giving trouble. Okay. Then uh, the dry eddy bat is Where is the saturation mixing? You. Saturation mixing ratio. Where is the saturation mixing? Is so fourteen? Here. Is it? No. Saturation mixing, mixing ratio is the dashed line, huh? ah. Where are the values for that? Just above the thousand. Just above, or oh, this is point four one two, huh? five ten. Ah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Huh? Omega is fourteen, huh? They are intersecting. Mm. No, I follow the saturation eddy back. So, it cuts a thousand somewhere. Now, Karthik, I want to clean this up. I want fresh sheet. Okay, very good. So we got that, right? So let me write whether I want to check whether the line is following me. Thirty, problem number. Pin. Okay, is all right. We'll proceed. Mm.
What is the wet bulb potential temperature? Ah, in this case, the wet bulb potential temperature is the same as T W because the original pressure of the air parcel was only. Oh, you write that. We had a rule, right? The wet bulb temperature is the arithmetic mean of the actual temperature and the dry bulb temperature. Actual temperature is 30. Sorry, actual temperature, dew point temperature. Actual temperature is 30, dew point temperature is 18, average is 24, but wet bulb was 22, but not bad. It is close. It is all right. Okay. We will proceed now. So, when it is lifted, when it is lifted up to 700 h power, which line, the red line, it follows some red line or whatever that, theta is a constant line, theta equal to 30 degree line is what it follows up to the LCL, then Then it follows the saturated radio bed up to so it went here, huh? Okay, LCL you can call. Did it go here? Hmm. Now, what is omega s at three? Omega of parcel is 14. It cannot hold so much, okay. So, the excess is 4 grams per kg, 80 percent of that becomes rain, okay. That is what is stated in the problem.
this is what I am saying remaining moisture, the correct English should be moisture remaining in the parcel whatever, remaining moisture in the parcel. So, 20 percent of that 4 grams per kg plus 10 which is the saturation corresponding to that. So, it is or you can take it as 14 minus 3.2, it is having 14, 3.2 became rain, so 10.8 is left, either way it is correct, it, it is the same. Now what you have to do is, again I will erase, you please note the, you noted 0.3 now. Very good. So, it was 700 and uh, 700 and 10, that is correct, oh, very good. Let me fix the point. Now, Attention please, please follow the saturated eddy bat until the omega s becomes 10.8, okay. So that is a very fine this thing. So the sat, are you getting my point? The saturation uh, mixing ratio is 10, the max saturation mixing ratio is 20. So I look at saturation mixing ratio which is like 10.8 or something, okay. So you will, and then it is cupping. Let's wait. That point is correct, right? Okay. Hmm. Come again. Seven hundred and ten, na? Huh? Hey, you said isotherm ten. What did you? Dash line. Dash line ten. Okay, very good. Ten. Okay. Hmm. Wait, wait. Ah, this one. You are fine, right? Then I will change the color. Mary, yes, what happened? Uh, you are thinking about the holidays. That is dead and gone in time. You live in the present. Eh? <laughs> okay, now what do we do? Saturation mixing ratio. Now is this okay? Huh? 10 and 20. Huh? I want 10.8, so I will take it as 11. Okay. All right, I got that. So, it will come down up to that. All right, then now it is fully saturated. After that, it is going to the other side of the mountain, it is coming down, not shedding any moisture. As it comes down, it becomes drier and drier. So, it will follow the dry eddy bed, okay. Hmm? Where is the dry eddy bed? Okay. So, I will like to call it as. So, T 5 equal to 
What did he ask? Okay, when it cuts, what is it T4? What is T3? Eight, very good. T4? I got twelve. Ten, eh? Okay. Okay, so. What is the omega s at what is the omega at uh, what will be the omega of the air parcel now? Uh, okay. So we started with fourteen and we are ending with ten point eight. What happened to the three point two? It went out as rain. But we started with 30 degrees centigrade and we came out to 38 degrees centigrade. Please evaluate the relative humidity at 0 0.5. What is the RH at 0 0.5? How do you do that? You know the omega. You have to get the omega s, right? Huh? Which one? Is it? Huh? What is it? Forty-one, forty-two. Omega s. Omega s. Hmm. Where did you go? All the way. Which one? Omega s. Okay. Let's say forty-five. How much is it? 224. Did you see that? Air at 30 degrees centigrade and 50 percent relative humidity, which was very comfortable, became air at 38 degrees centigrade and 24 percent RH. It becomes dry and hot. It became dry and hot reasonably a moist and comfortable air became, so this is let us work it out on, let us write all this on the board. Okay. So, remaining moisture it at, okay. so T 3 is Please tell me, T3 is 8, T3 is 80 percent, okay. P at this level 4 is 720.
So something like this you can expect in a quiz. You can keep it can keep you occupied for half an hour. Now you have to be a systematic. No surprises, but you have to do. You have to be very meticulous. I'll be able to test whether you know everything. Wet bulb, potential, sir, dry at a bad, this thing, and all these things. All the concepts which you have studied in thermodynamics will be put to test. Okay, omega, omega s. Such a wind is called a Chinook wind. Okay, okay. See, that is a Chinook wind. All right. Adiabatic warming of downward moving air produces the warm Chinook wind. So it is rising here. Then it is dissipating its moisture. Then there is adiabatic heating. And you are getting a clear and dry air. So, this Chinook wind. Chinook winds are simply Chinooks or how do you pronounce this, Marius? F O E H N. Foin. Foin winds, which are where the uh, Canadian prairies and great plains meet. Okay. It is uh, in mythology, it is known to be in popular etymology, it is known to be a snow eater because it can eat the snow on the other side. It is a snow eater. Okay. Uh, huh? You have few in Germany also, right? Yeah, yeah you have experienced that? Huh? Have you experienced? Uh, let's say, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, right? So, a strong Chinook wind can make one foot, can make snow one foot deep almost vanish in one day. So it can remove snow, right? The snow melts and partly evaporates in the dry wind. Okay, and uh, in Canada it takes place in these regions, and then Calgary and so on. So these are the typical the cloud pattern when the Chinook wind uh, happens. Okay, in Alberta in Canada, how Chinook occurs is basically rain shadow results from all that we have seen. We have seen the complete thermodynamics. Okay. It is also in uh, Chinook winds are sometimes cause a sharp increase in number of migraine headaches suffered by locals and are often called Chinook headaches. New, they have conducted studies in the Department of Clinical Neurosciences and they, they support the belief that this can cause headaches, irritability, sleeplessness and all that, right? Okay. Mm. Do you have something Chinook wind in India? What is it? Your Andi is not this, right? That is not this, yeah. Okay. So, Chinooks also occur in Denver. Denver is very notorious place in Colorado where always is because rocky mountains are there. I have experienced it myself and missed flights and all that. That story I will tell separately. So, Denver is a very dangerous region in the, it's a big airport, DIA, the Denver International Airport. But uh, till you climb 20, 25,000 feet, it's all, it's all dicey. Huh? So, <laughs> All right, so this is the Chinook wind. So let us go to Chinook wind and see some images. Huh? See, this is a good one. Huh? Mm. Get this 10 degrees, moisture lost, heat added, minus 12 degrees, Chinook wall cloud, Chinook. Okay, okay. Any doubts? So we will be able to solve problems of this nature, right? I asked some more things. Huh? Wet bulb potential temperature. Huh? What did I ask? Determine the temperature, potential temperature, mixing ratio, wet bulb potential temperature. What is the wet bulb potential temperature? No change. Wet bulb potential temperature, no change. Okay. That is a mic.
theta w is 22 is it was it 22 oh. okay let's move on to the next topic we have to look at the stability of an air parcel if there is an air parcel which is rising you give it some force will the air parcel continue to rise or will the air parcel return to its equilibrium okay if it returns to its equilibrium we again give a force if it, and if it starts oscillating then is there a natural frequency of the system so we, we have to get deep into the maths then you have to do f equal to ma then a equal to d square z by dt square then we will identify all the forces and then we get the characteristic frequency of this air parcel which is called the brunt weissala frequency with the do not worry too much about it, we will derive it into Morris class. There is something called the Brunt Weissala frequency, name of the two scientists who figured out air parcel when it oscillates, what is the natural frequency? Depending on whether this frequency is small, high, and this thing, we can look at the stability and all that. But before that, first we have to understand what we mean by stability. Stability we, we have to see with respect to unsaturated air and saturated air. So, we will start with considerations of static stability with unsaturated air, okay. Let's let's start. So this will take a couple of classes. First, we are going to look at unsaturated air. Please note this is slightly funny curve because height height is always our y coordinate in atmosphere. Huh? Temperature is not the y coordinate. So I am doing temperature versus height. How do you get the temperature versus height in the atmosphere? If you want, how will you obtain? Radio sonde. You can put a balloon and get the values. And then with that you have to find out how the temperature changes with z. That is called the gamma lapse rate which is like 5 to 6 Kelvin per kilometer correct. I have drawn two lines, two curves, what do you think they are? One is for, one is for the air, one is for the parcel. Please note the parcel pressure is the same as the air pressure but the parcel temperature need not be the same. If everything is the same, no activity, we have to, uh, atmosphere science, we have to close the show, okay. There is some difference in the temperature, there is a difference with buoyancy and then upward and downward for some activities there in the atmosphere, okay. So I want to call this which one? The steep one is the surrounding air this one is the air parcel. If it is an unsaturated air, the air parcel will follow what? Gamma, what is its dharma? What will it follow? Gamma of dry air, it will follow gamma D. But what do you get from radio sonde measurements? If you put a balloon and the radio sonde instrument, you will launch the balloon from now at 12 o'clock, it goes up, 
it will not detect air parcel, it will just detect, it will find out what is the temperature in the atmosphere, okay. So, what will be that? Gamma, okay. So, this is from radio sonde. Now, O is the initial equilibrium point. Now, tell me gamma equal to gamma d, gamma greater than gamma d, gamma less than gamma d. No, no, I am giving you the slope, it is how can it be equal? Gamma? Gamma greater than gamma d, surrender, how? This is height versus temperature, not temperature versus height. Do not go, do not do too much research, look at the two graphs, which is steeper, which is steeper yellow or pink? pink. Gamma. gamma is greater than gamma d, what is the lapse rate? It is dz by dt or dt by dz, then which pink is steeper or yellow is steeper? Yellow is steeper. Yellow is steeper from the point of view of lapse rate, so basic funda, is not it? Uh, so, what do you want to write here? Gamma yes, sir. Okay. clear? If you keep on looking, look, if you keep on looking at it for 5 minutes, you will get confused, just accept it. <laughs> okay. Now, we are pushing the air parcel from O, okay. Now, give a gentle upward push to the air parcel, so that it comes to a new level. At this level, the temperature of the air parcel is A, the temperature of the air is B, I am pushing it up, okay. Come down. Call it TA. Come down, call it TB. TA is huh? but once you push within a very small amount of time, the air parcel gets, uh, the air parcel gets its pressure adjusted to the pressure of the surrounding, that is the assumption, that is the assumption of air. So, do not worry about the pressure remains the same, but the temperature is different. So, what will happen to the density? Very good. Rho A is? A is the parcel and B is the air. If it is denser and you push it up, what will happen? It will come back. So, is it a stable situation or an unstable situation? Huh? stable situation. So, this is called, this situation is called positive static stability, okay. Okay, this is called
I will give all of you 2 minutes. Please consider the situation where the parcel is pushed downwards. Draw one more picture. The parcel is pushed downwards. Take the two new points as TC and TD. Argue out whether rho C, rho D is greater or equal and then find out whether the parcel will go down further or, or the parcel will come back to O. Therefore, once you have done that analysis in the next few minutes, can you conclude with reasonable confidence that if gamma is less than gamma D, irrespective of whether you push it up or push you down, or you push the air parcel down, it will always come back to O. Please get yourself convinced. Please complete that exercise. It is pushed down. Huh? Correct. Therefore, the parcel will come back to. Tomorrow's class what we will do is we will take up the situation at gamma greater than gamma d and prove that it is unstable or negative static stability. Okay. After that we will get an expression for the acceleration of the air parcel and then we will get an expression once it starts oscillating what will be the characteristic frequency that is a brunt weissala frequency. After that what you have to do is for saturated air it becomes more difficult then quiz 2 it will be too late for quiz 2 in the final exam I will give you a radius on the reading. I will give you the pressure and temperature at various heights. You have to plot it on the QT lawn P chart, find out the LCL and the whatever and then you will have to see A, B, B, C, C, D at all the levels where the parcel is stable, unstable, convectively stable, all that. So, that is going to be that is going to be the tough question in the exam. That means you are becoming a meteorologist, all right. So, so, so we are getting deeper into this thermodynamics. I thought this is interesting part. So, I am spending a lot more time. After this chapter is over, we will look at radiation and climate change. Dynamics, I will just touch upon 3 4 classes. I will just give geostrophic approximation and the cyclostrophic approximation, which is relevant to us. You can, I want you to be able to calculate the maximum wind in a cyclone, okay, maximum wind speed in a cyclone based on pressure differences and all.